The Macaulay are Gaia's memory. They store all the inherent collective thoughts from basically the beginning of time. Let's get into it. Hello everyone, welcome to The Maple Table. My name's Nathaniel. This is a channel where we discuss role-playing games, so if that's something you're interested in, I would love to have you join me at the table. So please hit that subscribe button so that you can get more content around Werewolf the Apocalypse and Starfinder from myself. And don't forget to hit that bell so that you know when it's coming. The Macaulay are were lizards or were dinosaurs if you prefer. I would venture to say that the Macaulay are actually the oldest of any of the changing breeds and the oldest who are still around. Even before man was walking around on earth, the Macaulay existed. And their collective race has the memories of that time stored inside of them. And basically all time from the beginning to now stored inside of them. And they can recall these memories, but not one Macaulay can remember this era in its entirety or perfectly for that matter. The way that this happens is the Macaulay can go into a sleep and in this dreaming, as they call it, they get snippets of the past, snippets of what was. It's also very mixed with things that they perceived to be and abominations and things that were present that should not have been. So with all of these images and all of these thoughts coming back to them, it makes it difficult to know exactly how accurate this memory dreaming is, especially the further back in time you go. The Macaulay are called those who remember because that is their job. It's not always accessible. Whatever memory they're trying to live or whatever memory they're trying to access, it's not just there at the front of mind, kind of like if you're recalling what you ate for breakfast yesterday. The Macaulay have a specific ritual called the dreaming around this. In prehistoric times, Gaia did create the Macaulay and they walked the earth with the dinosaurs. They controlled the sea, they controlled the land, they controlled the air. They were kings and queens and they tried to follow in their creator's footsteps. It is said that the Macaulay were the first to fashion weapons. They were the first to fashion tools. They made the first villages, the first civilizations. And with civilizations came war. They were also the first to make it. During the prehistoric times, the Macaulay had fashioned their cities. They had fashioned their tribes. They had kings, queens, rulers. They formed factions, and these factions eventually went to war with each other, trying to show or trying to prove who was the best. It was a very brutal time to live, and the Macaulay call this the Age of Kings. But unfortunately, nothing lasts forever. No one is exactly sure how the Lizard Society fell. Through the Macaulay Society, it is generally believed that the tyrannical rule of their Lizard King leaders is what brought the downfall of the civilization. Again, nobody really knows, but the society did fall away. This led into a new age for the Macaulay called the Age of Dreaming. It's about this point in history that humans began to emerge. They were weird looking fish that evolved feet and just walked up on land. Eventually, the humans, as they became numerous, were brought into the Macaulay society as workers and slaves. And again throughout the generations, eventually the Macaulay started breeding and intermixing with the humans, and this eventually gave the Macaulay a human form, for which they never had before. A few young Macaulay during this period started having dreams, started having visions. They called these dreams Nisus visions. During this age of sleeping, or near the end of the age of sleeping rather, this is when a mass extinction event happened for planet Earth. 65 million years ago, an asteroid struck the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. This impact created a massive storm and, of course, a massive explosion which wiped out millions, millions of species of plant and animals. Some of their kin did survive this extinction event. They did survive the meteor. 
And during this rebuilding phase for the Macaulay, this is known as the Age of Beasts in their history books. It was at this point that Gaia started creating the other changing breeds as most of her first children had essentially been wiped out. All of the changing breeds could have played nice, but as the history and these videos have shown, they really didn't. Just a quick reminder for yourself that if you're enjoying the video today, please hit that like button as that really does help the channel with the YouTube algorithm. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button with that bell notification if you want more content like this from myself. I'm having fun making it, I'm hoping that you're enjoying watching it. And hitting that like button lets me know that you are. Many of the other Farah and the changing breeds not only warred with each other in these wars of rage, but they also warred against the Macaulay and they took many of their numbers down. The Macaulay were large, they were massive, absolutely massive, which made them easy targets. Their skin and their scales, they were bright colors. They didn't camouflage, so it was very easy to pick a Macaulay out of a crowd. It wasn't really until the humans started fighting back against the Guru that the Wars of Rage ended and mankind became a new threat for the Pharah. In the modern times, the Macaulay come from one of four streams. And actually these streams are based around the four primeval rivers of the world. The first stream or the first tribe of the Macaulay, and it's probably the largest one as well. The first tribe would be a tribe of fighters called the Macaulay Mbembe. This group of Macaulay has actually survived in what is known today as crocodiles or alligators. It's actually two different species from the animal kingdom, but the Macaulay have lived on in these gene pools. The Mbembe can be found in Africa and the Americas. For a very long time, the Mbembe were almost never found outside of the Amazon rainforest. But lately, many of them have actually been starting to have what is known as the Dragon's Dream. This is almost like a prophecy that has been stored in the memory of the Macaulay and more of their members are actually starting to wake up and have this dream. It's something that is a shared dream across the entire species. There's also a tribe of Macaulay called the Gumagin. They are found in Oceania and Australia, and they actually have heritage from the Aborigines and the Melanesians. This particular group of Macaulay is known as the Forerunners. They are very gifted when it comes to spiritual things and they're actually very strong when it comes to their primeval nisus. And this is that ability that allows them to look at memories in the past. That will bring us to the Indian subcontinent and the Makara. This is a group of Makole who view themselves as ambassadors and diplomats to the rest of the changing breeds. This particular tribe has had significant influences from Indian culture. And this group is also very well known for its power in negotiation. The last tribe of the Macaulay is known as the Zhonglung. They are a stream of philosophers. Being that this group of the Macaulay tends to live in the East, they have significant dealings with the beast courts in that region. It is also largely with their association with the Emerald Court that this particular group avoided much of the conflict that ended up happening in the Wars of Shame. So what this means for this group is that when they look back into their dreaming or their nisus, this group has the fewest memories of conflict and war, simply because they were not there and they avoided it all. The Zhonglong operate in China, Japan, Korea, and Vietnam. And one particular trait that hallmarks this tribe is their patience. Most modern Makole also live very modest lives. They tend to not have a lot of wealth. And for the ones that live in North America, you can find many of them in the wallows, in the bayous, in Florida and California. In Africa, you can find them along the Nile. And in China and Australia, you'll find them in areas of hot springs or along riverbanks in very low populated areas. Humans had a tendency to not like things that slither, so they made many of the areas inhospitable or unwelcoming to Macaulay. An interesting thing to know about the Macaulay. Even though they've suffered much devastation at the hands of the Guru and some of the other Farah, they still war with each other. Though they don't necessarily have the same grandiose nature that they did before in their prehistoric times or their glory days, they are also not as violent with each other now as they were in history. 
Rather than forming specific individual tribes, they actually call these groups clutches, because they're not necessarily big enough on their own to be a tribe. But if two clutches are inhabiting the same area or the same territory, when two clutches go to war with each other, what's interesting is the Macaulay will not kill anyone from the other clutch. They will injure them, they will shame them, but everyone gets to live. The Macaulay also share a language between every existing Macaulay. It's called Dragon Tongue. When a Macaulay goes through its first change, this piece is unlocked in their brain after the change has happened. It's kind of like a memory that sort of applies itself to your knowledge base once you've experienced it. I really like the Macaulay. They're a fantastic addition to Werewolf the Apocalypse. For creative players and for creative storytellers, there is so much that you can use throughout history to give story arcs if you wanted to have something from the past affect your group or your, your players now in the future. I've actually played in a game where one of the players was a Macaulay and they were able to provide some pretty significant insight for our group in the various tasks that we were going about trying to complete. They don't always have to be the wise sages, but a Macaulay is definitely geared towards that. There's so much here for the Macaulay history that I've really glossed over a lot of it. But think about it for a second. This group of Farah dates back to prehistoric times. They walked the earth with dinosaurs and they're still here. And I think that's great. Up on the screen now, you'll see the list of changing breed tribes that I have covered, and I'm adding more to those every week, so please check that out. YouTube will have made a recommendation for you there. My name's Nathaniel. You've been watching The Maple Table. Thank you so much for your subscription. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.